Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. I'm Franco, I'm an engineer and a lure designer and I make these videos to share with you what I've come up with to make lures and techniques to finish them and ways to predict how well they're gonna perform in the water. Essentially, just adding a little bit of engineering and physics to the art of lure making. And today, we're gonna be dealing with more topics on airbrushes. Specifically, how to keep them running and spraying like they're brand new. Now, admittedly, I don't buy the highest quality uh, airbrushes. I'm not an artist, I'm more of a technician. But recently I did buy a nice Iwata that I, I really like the way it functions and it's starting to degrade a little bit in the quality of the spray. And I know it's simply my inability to give it a good cleaning. And I've got two other ones that are in service. They're inexpensive airbrushes by Master Airbrush. And I've been buying these since the day I started airbrushing. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever paid more than $20 for them and I've paid as little as $11 for a, an airbrush. And I know what you're thinking, you get what you pay for. Well, that might be true, but if they come to you and they spray relatively well right out of the box, and there's no reason why they should degrade so quickly unless parts are breaking, and they're not. The problem is that I have a difficult time, whether because of my lack of patience or just bad technique, I have a difficult time getting them really clean and they're suffering for it. These two in particular have just stopped spraying. Uh, they'll just sort of sputter and spray a little bit and then stop. So instead of beating myself up, I'm going to try a new technique, an ultrasonic cleaner. And I, I know I'm not the first to, to think of this. I know there's plenty of people probably using ultrasonic cleaners to clean their uh, airbrushes, but I've never done it. So I'm going to do an unboxing on this little cleaner and then we're going to do some experimentation with an airbrush that is not working at all. And we'll see if we can bring this thing back from the dead. So before we get too deep into this, let's go to the paint booth and I'll show you exactly what this is doing or what it's not doing. All right, so let's use a nice clean piece of white paper and I'll put a little bit of black paint in this airbrush. Let me hook it up to the air hose. I'll turn the flow valve on. And I'm gonna set the pressure to 22 PSI. I was able to draw that little line but see how fuzzy it is, and then it just stops. And then I've got it all the way open, and just barely there. And when I release, it spurts. See? So most of the paint is coming out on allowing the trigger to come back to zero paint. Yeah. So it's impossible to paint with. All right, I'm excited about this. I know I'm not the only one that's thought of using an ultra, ultrasonic cleaner for their small parts, especially airbrushes. Uh, and I've thought about it in the past, but it's always been uh, something that seemed way too expensive. But I found this one and it's, it ran me around $38, I believe it was, uh, free shipping. And um, it's just the right size. It's stainless steel. Well, too much talk. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. a bit smaller than I expected but I'm glad of that. Uh, this way I can use uh, less cleaning fluid. Not much in the box. Just packing an electric cord and a little cleaner. Check it out. It's tiny. Alright so that's much smaller than I expected but again probably appropriate. Alright so this little lid's got a blue wrapper on it. Feels like decent alloy it's not really sticking to the magnet there's a little brochure or pamphlet an owner's manual says so right here and the, the company is constant the gas power ultrasonic cleaning machine so i'll have to read through it uh, to understand exactly how to use it but let me show you what else comes with it oh shoot i know what this is this is uh 
a little stainless steel ball, I guess for really tiny parts. That'll come in handy. Um, I've got one of these. Uh, I think these things are actually meant for brewing tea. Uh, it's got a stainless steel basket with a nice mesh about, looks like to be about eighth inch squares. And then does this remove? Nope. And so it's got a stainless steel uh, tub. No holes, no drain ports, no nothing. Just a, It's just sealed in there. Uh, it's got a nice finish here. It looks like pretty nice. Uh, and then we've got an on-off button, a timer, and something they're calling exhaust. I'm going to have to read about that. It looks pretty nice and tight and nicely built. Hopefully it'll work at least as good as it looks. So I'm reading the instructions and the translation from Chinese is really poor. But I've done this so much that I can kind of do a translation of a translation. I'm going to start off with just water and then probably only add a few drops of dog detergent. All right, I'm going to use some distilled water. 500 milliliters should be enough. Right on the money. All right, a couple drops of Dawn. And we'll stir that in with a clean plastic spoon. Right, so the next question is going to be whether to completely dismantle the airbrush or leave it intact and see how it cleans it. But I think I'm just going to pull it completely apart. I want to set it up for success. Before we get any further along, let's talk a little bit about how an airbrush actually works. So first, let's do a quick rudimentary sketch of the interior of an airbrush with a little cross-sectional drawing. All right, so hopefully you can see what I'm drawing here. That red line is the needle and the air flows into the valve and when this trigger plunges the, the uh, valve plunger, it allows air to flow in, but it doesn't flow into the body here. It actually flows in to this little diversion area and then flows around the, the very tip, which is the nozzle that the needle fits into. The paint stays in this side of the gun due to a little O-ring. And so the air should never flow back towards the trigger and neither should the paint. So the critical parts here are everything from the trigger forward. And now I'm just going to pull this thing apart. So my focus is going to be on the part of the gun that's forward of the trigger. And now all the parts are taken off. So let's go ahead and just put all the parts in the basket. There. It might be better if it's held off the bottom. You can either have it on with the heat or on without the heat. I'm going to go ahead and use both the ultrasonics and the heat. And it allows you to set time here, anything from zero to 900 seconds. So I'm gonna set it for the maximum amount, the 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. Full 900 seconds. And I'll turn on the, the ultrasonic. Well, a little bit loud. And I'll cover it so it cooks all the way through. All right, so it's done. Uh, and the temperature is got, didn't get up much higher than 82 degrees, 83 degrees. Let's see what it's done. So I've shaken this out as best I can, and I also spritz it with a fresh, some fresh clean water. So let's go ahead and take this over to the sink. I'll pour it through a funnel that has a coffee filter in it, and we'll see just how much of this stuff is actually going to show up on the coffee filter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just set it on this uh, piece of white paper towel. Well, I hope you can see all this dust and particles. And I can even see some paint colors in there. Definitely a lot of black and even some a little bit of the silver. So let me go ahead and put this back together. We'll go back to the paint booth and we'll give it a shot. If it actually works now, uh, that's a big savings in time for me, man, because I cleaned it twice and it, you saw how it was operating. So let's see. Mm. Well, no change. Well, that was a disappointment. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but we're not done. We're going to go ahead and go to the next level and I'm going to use a different kind of cleaning solution and we're going to do a little bit of soak time. All right, so before I move on, I just want to take a little bit of time just to explain uh, ultrasonics because there may be some folks out there who aren't quite sure what I'm talking about. 
Ultrasonic waves are essentially sound waves that are outside the audible level. So that means somewhere above uh, 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. So that said, the frequency of the sound that they're using to mechanically clean things, uh, it varies. You might see some frequencies down near the lower end, uh, somewhere around 25 kilohertz. And those are typically used for heavier metals, heavier parts, or large tough parts that can take the beating that that low frequency is going to give. But for small parts, delicate things like jewelry or medical apparatuses, those kinds of things, typically you want something that's not going to be so, uh, so violently energetic. Uh, so most of these cleaners run around 40 kilohertz, and that's what this one is. So the next question might be, well, why, why does it even clean? These sound waves create microscopic low pressure zones where cavitation bubbles form. And those little microscopic cavitation bubbles, they form and pull off the surface with some energy. And that energy is the sort of scouring energy, or I guess it's like scrubbing bubbles, I guess. But it's those tiny little microscopic cavitation bubbles that do the work. So the next thing we're gonna experiment with is isopropyl alcohol. This is 91% isopropyl and I'm going to fill this thing or not really fill it, but I'll probably go two thirds up. And now I'm going to dismantle that same uh, airbrush and we'll put it in there. I'm going to allow it to soak for a few hours and then we'll give it another 20 minutes or so of uh, exposure to the ultrasonics. And hopefully maybe that'll do the trick. All right, let's wait for a few hours. Well, I allowed it to soak for four hours, and then I ran two 15-minute cycles on the ultrasonics. You can clearly see the bubbles forming in the alcohol. I also had the heater run it. It got up to about 100 degrees. I did like last time and poured the alcohol off into a filter. I wanted to see if we would collect as much debris, and you can see we did. All right, let's use a clean piece of paper. Hopefully, this will do the trick. Just gonna put a couple drops of black in here. Much better. All right, much, much better. So I guess the moral of the story is it will clean, as you can see from what was left over in that um, coffee filter. But the bigger lesson for me is don't let these things get so dirty that they don't work. I think the cleaning machine is really good uh, to be used right after you actually have a painting session. Pull it apart, drop it in there with some mild soap and water, maybe let it soak overnight, run it for 15 minutes, put it back together, uh, and you should have a really nice operating airbrush and not something you've got to uh, revive from the dead. All right, next one up is this side load uh, airbrush. It's been crapped out for about a month. Hopefully, I can get this one to run too. If you enjoy these kind of videos, uh, do me a solid, give me a thumbs up. It really helps build the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, certainly subscribe. And if you haven't noticed, I got my logo on my t-shirt. <laughs> Let me know what you think of my new logo. You can let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.